Glory to God. What are you living for? We are still answering that question and we will be answering this question until the end of December. Why are we answering this question at this time? Because we are exiting 2017 and we are about to enter into another year. If 2017 was challenging, if you were blessed in 2017, if you are at a point where you are like 50-50, that's not what God wants for you. God wants you to have what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, right? Or you can even imagine. So what are we doing with this teaching? We want us to get to a point where we are living the life. Our life is actually producing the fruits that will enable us have that life that is filled abundantly to it overflows. There is no way you will be able to live an overflowing life, a life that is always, always constantly producing joy, impacting other people's life if you're not living in your purpose. So that's why we are saying or asking you the question, asking ourselves the question, what are you living for? What is that one thing you want to be able to see change in this life? What is that one thing you want to be able to leave your impact uh, um, on as you exit the world? What is that one thing you want to be able to say, because I came to the world, families now live better. Um, married people now enjoy their relationships. Um, what? So many things, right? Because I came into the world, the education system in my country has changed. Um, because I came into the world, the road network in my country has changed. Because I came into the world, the gospel has gone to different parts of the world. Listen, your purpose, what you're living for, I don't want you to get it wrong. It's not, it will not always be to, to be standing on a pulpit somewhere. It's usually not. God didn't create everyone to stand on a pulpit. Right? Even in your church, if you're a minister of the gospel listening to me, you're not the eat because you stand on the pulpit. The people that are helping um, clean the toilet, the people that are helping control the traffic, they are as well helping to spread the gospel as much, even better, than the one that is preaching because if the people are offended in the parking lot you, you have to be doing an extra work to let them even listen as you preach what are we saying we're saying here that we should live to make a difference we should live our life with the mindset of i'm here to make a difference look at the virgins we didn't forget we're looking at the virgins right one made five wise and one made five foolish we said it was the extra oil now, how is it related to what we just said? Listen, it is not possible to make any impact in the kingdom of God by your flesh. No matter what you are called to do, the only way you can impact anybody's life is first of all being impacted yourself. You have to be impacted and the only person that can impact any life and change a destiny is the Spirit of God. You get, born, you get born again by the Spirit. You, you get filled with the Spirit to live the life that you are created to live. There's a difference between the anointing upon you and the anointing within. You need both. Listen to what um, Luke chapter eight, Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the good news, right? And teach and all of that good stuff in that particular scripture. When the Spirit is upon you, it's not for you. It's for other people. It's for service. It's for doing the things that you were created to do. But before the Spirit can get upon you in the New Testament, the Spirit has to get in you. You have to be born again first. When you get born again, then you'll be anointed. Get born again means what? You connect yourself to the Spirit of God. You're one with the Spirit of God. Now you're a new creation. Then you can get the Spirit upon you to do what? Impact your world. 
So impact is only possible when you have a genuine relationship with the Holy Spirit. Not just a genuine relationship of speaking in tongues, but a genuine relationship of being led by the Spirit. The genuine relationship of being able to say, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit, when you do wrong. The genuine relationship of realizing that the Holy Spirit is not an it, but a he. Amen? You can make impact. You can live your purpose if you will only realize that the Holy Spirit in you is able to help you realize that purpose. Yield to the Holy Spirit and impact your world. Amen? Amen.